For those of you who are watching online this morning, the title of my sermon is Experiencing the Risen Christ. Last week we heard the account of Jesus appearing to his disciples from the Gospel of John. In that account, the disciples' reaction to the risen Christ is joyful compared to the account in the Gospel of Luke, which we will hear today. In John's account, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. This is not the same account that we get in the Gospel of Luke. In Luke's account, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Before I read the scripture from the Gospel of Luke, let me set the scene for you because it explains the opening verse in our scripture reading this morning and helps the scripture to make more sense. The section of scripture that we have immediately following our scripture reading today is the story of the walk to Emmaus. Cleopas and his friend were walking to Emmaus when Jesus comes alongside them and asks them what they are talking about. And even though these two men are the disciples of Jesus, although not part of the twelve, they are kept from recognizing them. They tell Jesus about his own resurrection and crucifixion, his crucifixion and resurrection, and how they had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And then they tell him that some women from their group had found the tomb empty and had seen visions of angels who said he was alive. And then beginning with Moses and all of the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things written about himself in all of the scriptures. And that evening at Emmaus, they urged Jesus to stay with them and to eat with them. And while Jesus was at the table, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, and he vanished from their sight. They immediately get back up and run to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. They said, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to us. They are in the middle of accounting everything that happened on the road to Emmaus and in the breaking of bread at dinner. And this is where we pick up in our scripture today. So let's get started by hearing these words from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were dis still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. And when he had said this, these, and he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, 
And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness to these things. Beloved, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks yes, be to God. God. Amen. Jesus comes and stands among them and says, peace be with you. The disciples were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost or a spirit. By thinking that the risen Lord was a spirit or a ghost, the disciples may have either misunderstood the nature of the resurrection or thought that a spirit was deceiving them. This situation gives Jesus the opportunity to clarify the nature of the resurrection and to confirm its reality in touch and in eating, which spirits cannot do. In the book of Tibet, in the Apocrypha, the angel Raphael is sent by God to help Tobias and his son, or Tibet and his son Tobias. And at the end of that story, Raphael proclaims to them that he is an angel sent by God, and he says this, Although you were watching me, I really did not eat or drink anything, but what you saw was a vision. An angel is spirit, and he cannot eat or drink. Jesus, on the other hand, is not a ghost or a spirit, and thus proves his claims by letting his disciples touch him and feed him. Jesus proves to his followers that he has been resurrected. Not only did he stand in their presence so they could see and touch him and his wounds, but he also ate a piece of broiled fish to demonstrate that he was not a ghost or a spirit. Now what I find really interesting here and also in the Gospel of John is that the disciples are in a house and Jesus doesn't walk through a door or walk through a wall. He just appears out of nowhere and stands in their presence. Jesus is flesh and bones and he proves that to his disciples, allowing them to touch him and to see his hands and feet where he was pierced when nailed to the cross. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And this speaks to his identity. He lived on the earth as a man, walking among men and suffered the weakness of humanity. Yet he also displayed the awesome power of God as he healed the sick, walked on water, calmed the sea, raised the dead, and drove out demons with a spoken word. We have to remember the Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. This is the Holy Trinity. Three distinct persons sharing the same essence. This is the mystery of our faith. Jesus tells his disciples, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. The disciples have doubts which includes some confusion about the physical reality of Jesus' resurrected body and persistent questions about the really reality of the resurrection itself. Jesus tells them to look at his hands and feet to ensure that the risen Christ is the same person who was crucified. 
He also tells them to touch him and see. He is offering them proof that he has risen from the grave as he told them three times that he would. The scripture tells us that in their joy, they were still disbelieving and still wondering what the resurrection of Jesus was all about. He has a physical body that shows his wounds from the cross, and yet he can still appear out of nowhere right before their eyes. And Jesus then asked them to give him something to eat, to give further proof that he is not a ghost or a spirit. So the disciples give him some broiled fish. Jesus then moves on to interpret the scriptures about himself, just like he did for Cleopas and his friends on the walk to Emmaus. And Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. <clears throat> Jesus' resurrection fulfills everything Jesus told his disciples while he was still with them. And he reminds them of that and all that was written about him in the scriptures. In the first part of verse 45, it says, Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. True understanding of the scriptures is a gift from God. And this gift is freely available to each and every one of us. All we need to do is pray to God that he would open our hearts and minds to the work of the Holy Spirit as we read the scriptures. And we should read the scriptures each and every day. Jesus then tells his disciples, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Jesus' disciples were witness, witnesses to his death and now to his resurrection from the dead. So Jesus instructs them on what they are to preach and where they should start. This happened on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon all of Jesus' disciples. And then Peter gets up and preaches a message about the death and resurrection of Jesus and says that there is forgiveness of sins for all of those who would believe in Jesus. And Acts tells us, that there were about 3,000 persons who believed that, that message and were baptized and added to the church that day. In the final verse of our scripture reading, Jesus says, you are witnesses of these things. The interpretation of the scriptures and the commissioning of the disciples is a look both backwards and forwards. It serves both to bring closure by recapping the major themes of Scripture from the Old Testament and the coming of the Holy Spirit and the commissioning of the disciples on the day of Pentecost. And as eyewitnesses, the disciples were to serve as guardians of the gospel message which they taught others and some of which were written down for us today. Have you personally experienced the risen Christ? <clears throat> the author of the book of Hebrews writes this about Jesus. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives 
to make intercession for them. The risen Christ lives and he intercedes for us on our behalf to God the Father. Do we thank Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins and for reconciling us to the Lord our God? Do we pray to the Lord Jesus? We should because Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And if we have a personal relationship with him, then he is also our friend. Friendship requires communication between two people. So if we spend time in prayer to the Lord Jesus, then we start to develop a friendship with him. Of course, friendship requires constant work and communication. So we must be in constant communication with Jesus throughout the day through prayer. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Trinity is three distinct persons sharing the same essence. So develop a prayer life with your Lord and your Savior. Do you personally know and walk with Jesus daily? We are either getting ready to go through a storm or going through a storm or are coming out of a storm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul writes, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we have a personal relationship with Jesus, with our Lord and our Savior, then we have the strength, the victory, and the confidence of Christ to see us through the storms of life. We do not have to rely on our own strength. We have Jesus with us. We need the peace of Christ in our daily lives. And no matter where we are in relation to the storm. Paul writes to the Colossians, Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful that the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. So seek and enjoy the peace of Christ in your daily life with Jesus walking alongside of us and guiding us, we can get through anything that we encounter in this life and be thankful. <clears throat> You've heard me talk about this daily devotion before. It's called Jesus Calling. And the subtext of this title is peace, enjoying peace in his presence. This daily devotional helps you to seek and enjoy the peace of Christ in your daily lives by giving you areas to focus on in your relationship with the Lord Jesus. This is not a devotional that you will read just once but one that you will want to be year after year after year. I believe it was in 2012 that I started reading this devotional, and I still read it today. 
If you want to get to know the Father, then you have to get to know the Son. So take time daily to grow in your relationship with the, your Lord and your Savior. Experience the risen Christ by seeking and enjoying the peace of Christ in your daily lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.